Well, good afternoon. We're continuing on with the commentary on the Epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 8, and we're now in part 2, the title being The Sons of Zadok. Of Zadok. Remember part 1, the Levitical priesthood had been abolished, and now we see what God had promised. The sons of Zadok. Everybody knew that the sons of Zadok were different. There is a clear path explaining how man is to minister to God and what he requires to the, of this ministry. In this day, we are challenged to examine our faith and our belief structure under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and in light of the Word of God. The king priest blessings are framed in powerful perspectives along with the demand for righteousness and holiness. It's time to release the sons of Zadok. Sons of Zadok minister unto the great high priest, Jesus Christ. Only the sons of Dadok, Zadok were to minister unto God. Eli ministered unto the people. Zadok ministered unto God. So there we have the two splits again. The people of Zadok and the people of Eli, the spirit of Eli. Who are the sons of Zadok? Few people even believe that God needed ministering to, or that no one would know where to begin. Unmistakably, the essence of Ezekiel 44 was what characterizes the person who may minister to God. Ezekiel 44:14 was a pivotal verse separating those who minister to the people and declaring who will not minister to God. Only the sons of Zadok are to minister to God. They minister to God through their sacrifices, their leadership, all the while walking in holiness. Their prayers were mingled with their anointed, sweet-smelling savour at the altar of incense. Their holiness excluded from their lives. I'll say that again. Their holiness exuded from their lives as they offered sin and peace offerings. People knew they were different. Rituals were not observed by the sons of Zadok. They entered into the presence of the Lord during their duties. They taught the difference between the holy and the profane. They talked differently and they walked differently. Their lives reflected the purity and holiness of the Lord. Demonstrations in the Holy Ghost and power is not the unusual but rather the ordinary for the sons of Zadok. Only the sons of Zadok, which means righteousness, could come before the Lord and minister unto him. Those who walk in holiness, comprising no aspect of word or walk, and who teach the people to be holy, qualify. So that's a condition of being a, a member of the sons of Zadok. You have to be holy to qualify, to even minister before the Lord. To minister to God begins with clean hands and a pure heart. Its rewards are different. Instead of accolades from men, the sons of Zadok find accolades from the Lord. His presence ensures that peace reigns, and every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 29. Peace will rest upon the congregant's house as they minister to them holiness in the ways of the Lord. The bottom line is, Choose whether you will be a minister to the people only or a minister to, unto the people and unto God. Will you continue to be what you have been or will you become a son of Zadok? There is no middle ground. Either you are a son of Zadok or you are not. That is why it is necessary to know what is and what is not related to the sons of Zadok. What it means to be a son of Zadok speaks of the baptism of fire, spoken by the Holy Spirit. Don't get many teachings about that from the pulpit these days. The sensitivity of the Spirit of God and the determination to have Jesus as my only Lord. If you put anything above God in your lives, then you're worshipping another idol. You shall have no other gods before me. The fundamental first law of the Old Testament, which was also f 
make very clear in the New Testament. That's Ezekiel 44. Who will ascend into the presence of the Lord? Or who will stand in his holy place? Psalm 24.3. Its rewards are different. Instead of accolades from men, sons of Zanuck find accolades from the Lord through his presence. Ezekiel 44 verse 29. Sensitivity to the Spirit of God and determined to have Jesus as their only Lord is their secret and their power. Demonstrations in the Holy Ghost and power is not unusual, but rather the ordinary for the sons of Zadok. They minister to God through their sacrifices and their leadership, all the way walking in holiness. Their prayers are mingled with their sacrifices, that is, their worship. The earth splits with the sound. 1 Samuel 1-4 to tells us that the sons of Eli represent the flesh religion set apart from God, but the sons of Zadok represent a spiritual heritage based on intimacy with God. That which is pressure to Ewai, which was the system, is its people and its goods. Shafarish, they were after the money. That which is precious to the sons of God are their vows to God. They have but one rule. They must obey the voice of the Lord in all things. Zechariah 6.15 Without any thought of their own personal safety. Righteousness and rejection of the system characterizes the sons of Zadok. Eli ministers to the people and Zadok ministers unto the Lord. The system also substitutes something to take the place of or modify the real thing. Righteousness is fluid like a river. Ezekiel chapter 47 shows the signs and the origin of the throne room of the temple of God. Sons know that one does not take time to pray because there simply is no other meaningful time without it. We were made to commune with God. If you don't pray, you're not communing with God. Religion, the system, can only minister to man. In Eli's time, holiness was not even emphasized. Zadok does not practice being in the presence of God. They just live in his presence continually. Everywhere, Zadok and his sons find themselves there is a great honor and blessing. 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 39 and 40 says, And Zadok, the priest, took a horn of oil out of the tabernacle, and anointed Solomon to be king. And they blew the trumpet, and all of the people said, Long live King Solomon! And all of the people played on flutes, and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth split with the sound of it. Talk about the sound being released through their worship and intercession. We need to release the sons of Zodok in houses of prayer and worship right across our nations today. Ezekiel chapter 44 verse 15 says, But the priests of Levite, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary, when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, says the Lord God. Ezekiel chapter 48 verse 11, It shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, which have kept my charge, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray as the Levites went astray. When the nation of Israel turned their back on God, the Levites went with the people and also turned their back on God. But the sons of Dadok did not. They stayed focused on God. Ezekiel chapter 40 to 48 deals with the glory of the future kingdom that Israel will enjoy. Once the nation is reborn, chapter 38. Now, 14th of May, 1948, the nation was reborn. They're already now starting to be in the glory of the future kingdom of Israel. And the enemies will be defeated. Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, at the second coming of Jesus Christ. Twice it is repeated that the sons of Zadok will enjoy special blessings and special privileges in that kingdom 
because they remain faithful to God despite the apostasy and idolatry of the nation. Can you say that your pastor or my pastor can stand up to that test? Zadok was a priest who lived and served during the reigns of David and Solomon. He was of the line of Eleazar, Aaron's son, as opposed to the line of Ithamar, 1 Corinthians, 1 Chronicles 24.3, and became the fulfillment of God's judgment on the house of Eli, 1 Samuel 2.35. At the outset of Solomon's reign over Israel, 1 Kings 2, verses 27 and 35. As a young man, the Bible says that Zadok was a mighty warrior of valor. 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 28. He was not only a priest, but also a warrior. He remained true to the Lord and to the king when others were carried away by the rebellions under Absalom. That's 2 Samuel chapter 15 and Adonijah, 1 Kings chapter 1. His progeny served faithfully in Judah's great revival under King Hezekiah. 2 Chronicles chapter 31 Because of this steadfast commitment, the Lord will ri richly reward Zadok and his sons when Christ returns to rule and reign on the earth. <coughs> There's an important practical lesson for us to learn from this interesting statement in the book of Ezekiel. Just like Zadok and his sons, we find ourselves in a time when God's people on the massive scale are going astray. Despite the apostasy and the apathy and the ignorance and the lukewarm condition of today's church, God calls on us to stand fast, to be faithful and remain true to the charge he's given us. And there, there are eternal blessings and privileges that await those who will answer the call. I believe the sons of Zadok minister to the Lord and not to the people. Also the sons of Zadok will teach the difference between the holy and the common, that is, the unholy. Where are the sons of Zadok today? More than one kind of worship. Are you satisfied with the worship you are seeing and hearing in the body of Christ today? This is a question I heard the Lord speak to me some years ago. I did not have to think long for an answer, as I have now been in worship ministry for over 70 years. Just realized that I've written this teaching 20 years ago because it said 50 years then I've been very unsatisfied with what I've been hearing in churches and Christian meetings and on Christian television for a very long time I know that there was a higher place a truly place where the true worship of Almighty God could be experienced with his children who truly loved him we have experienced this type of worship in the meetings in Singapore and Thailand in the early 1980s and long for it to return to the body of Christ. Jesus has promised in John chapter 4 verse 23, but the hour comes and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. In saying this, Jesus made it obvious that there is no more, there is more than one kind of worship. And further he stated there is such a thing as true worship, which is done in the spirit rather than in the flesh. And he said the hour for that real worship was starting right then, right back before the cross. Yet today the body of Christ, I see very little of this type of worship. I estimate that less than 10% of all worship in churches across the nations falls into this category today. Which is a pity, because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Appearance of worship. Part of the problem is our great advancements in technology. Virtually everything can be programmed now. If you do not have a great voice, no problem. The right equipment can make anyone sound good. I am not against the wonderful equipment that can be had today. I believe God is the inventor of, of it all. After all, we are told that Satan himself was created with tabrets and pipes right inside of him. Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 13. However, equipment can become the instrument that is used to mimic reality. 
a person can be made to appear to worship when in fact his heart is not worshipping God at all. You can be taught to look right and sound right even when you are not right in your heart, in your spirit. Skill has become more important than anointing in a lot of our services. But I still believe it is not by might nor by power but my spirit, says the Lord. Give me an anointed musician any day over a skilled musician who has no anointing. Horizontal worship. In the Old Testament, there is a bit of information about a, ma a man called Zadok. Only the name Zadok means righteous. It means just, or to make right in a moral sense. Zadok and his sons were priests, but they belonged to a special order of the priest calling. These men were men of great integrity who were deeply committed to the call of God in their lives to worship him who had called them. They were sanctified and consecrated to the work that the Lord had called them to do. They had blinkers on. They were focused on what God had called them to do and nothing else. In Ezekiel chapter 48 verse 11, the word says, It shall be for the priests that are sanctified of the sons of Zadok, which have kept my charge, which went not astray when the children of Israel went astray, and the Levites also went astray. The Levites were called a minister to the house of the Lord. Their responsibility was to care for the holy things and for the tabernacle itself. But the sons of Zadok had a different calling. They were called to draw near to God himself and to worship him only. You could say the Levites were called to horizontal ministry. They ministered outwards in regard to the tabernacle and to the Jewish people. The sons of God had vertical worship. They worshipped upwards to God. Horizontal worship is necessary. It is not a bad thing. However, this ministry is to the people and not as much to the Lord. The vertical ministry of Zadok is unique. And it is a very high calling to, of God himself before it ever touches the people of God. Both ministries are necessary. Let's look at the Zadok anointing. Most importantly, I do believe the ministry of the sons of Zadok is under or unto the Lord. We are told in Revelations 1, 5 and 6 that we have all been made to be kings and priests unto our God. Every Christian is a priest unto God. Yet as surely as there were those who were Levites and those who were sons of God in the Old Testament days, so there are both kinds of priestly ministries on, going on today. The reason we find ourselves unsatisfied with much of the worship today is that it does not come to us by the Zadok anointing. It is often ego-driven and self-centered. But when you sit under a true Zadok anointing, you will know it. Under that anointing you will find release from yourself as you soar upwards into the throne room of the Most High God. You will become lost in His presence and will no longer suffer from the fear of man. It is under this great anointing that you will experience realms of His Spirit, seeing visions and hearing the heavenly orchestra and choir. In this anointing you will also find healing and miracles to flow because you are in His divine presence. The worship that comes from Zadok anointing will lift you higher and higher as you climb the Mount of Ascension to where he becomes the very center of your being. And at last, as you fall before his throne, you will know the satisfaction that comes from the union of God and man. In this place, you know that he is satisfied with the worship as well. <coughs> the Zadok anointing does not have anything to do with technology or voice training or learning to play an instrument well. It has to do with a spiritual endowment, an anointing given by God, and developed under His instruction. The worship produced under that anointing comes from the spirit of a man, touched by the Spirit of God. The purpose of the Zadok anointing is to minister unto God, yet when you are in the presence of that anointing, even if you are not moving in that anointing yourself, you will be ministered to as well. For that anointing draws the presence of God and He is always so powerful and generous 
that when he draws near, you cannot keep from being blessed in numerous ways. This is not about laying hands on people, although I very much believe in that ministry as well. This is about the awesome presence of God as he himself is drawn to his people by true spiritual worship. This is not even what has come to be called soaking ministry or soaking music, for it has a prophetic edge as God speaks to his people through new songs and the prophetic word which is released by that anointing. I do believe that this wonderful anointing is going to be brought about out upon the body of Christ in this hour. Though we have traveled all over the world, I can count on one hand the number of people with the Zadok anointed I have known. Yet I believe it is coming. The cry of God's people for true worship is growing now. Surely he will answer this cry from the hearts of the people. Are you ready to cry out to God for the release of the Zadok anointing to fall upon the body of Christ in your church, your city, and your nation. <laughs>